Welcome everybody again to another episode of the Idea Me Show, the show that profiles the human beings behind the really big ideas that are shaping our world and inspiring the future and future creators. Uh, and for those that like great stories, I'm Ira Pastor, your health and longevity ambassador along for this ride. So for the last several shows, uh, we've been spending a lot of time talking about uh, various technologies uh, in various labs, uh, government organizations, universities, where people are working on the, the topic of healthy aging and human enhancement. Uh, we've also been talking with guests about a variety of what I'll call the non-therapeutic or external interventions that affect health and wellness, and have touched on topics like exercise, diet, the importance of human-animal bond, chronobiology, and the importance of getting out in nature and things of this nature. And lastly, we've been talking with guests who are using technologies in this increasingly connected world with globalized and standardized medical research and training to get the right patients to the right technologies in the right countries faster and more efficiently to help save lives and reduce suffering. On today's show, we are going to bring all of these themes together, you know, not focusing on a specific company or technology or laboratory, but on a specific country uh, that's really making tremendous strides on the themes of health, wellness, longevity, as part of their social, economic, and international development, and really taking it to a whole new level. And for that, we're going to take a, a virtual trip down to the country of Costa Rica today. For those that are aware, the country of Costa Rica is a, is a sovereign state here in Central America with a population of around 5 million people, a very stable economy. And while for many years, agriculture exports were the backbone of its of a commodity-driven economy, it's been making extreme, very amazing development as far as economic diversification is concerned, especially in the areas of ecotourism, health tourism, as parts of the economy are concerned. Uh, the average life expectancy of Costa Ricans is a little over 80 years, which is above that of the United States. The country is home to the, the Nicoya Peninsula, which is considered one of the major blue zones in the world where people routinely live active lives past 100 years. Costa Rica is also ranked at the top of the Happy Planet Index as an index of uh, human well-being and environment. Costa Rica has been cited as Central America's great health success story with its healthcare system, ranking it higher than the United States despite having a fraction of the GDP. Costa Rica has become this major destination in recent years for medical tourism, receiving you know, hundreds of thousands of patients annually that come for medical treatment due to the you know, attractive geography, high quality of medical services, and lower medical costs. So to, for today's guest, while I wear the honorary title of ambassador on this show, we actually have a real ambassador joining us. Our guest today is Ambassador Dr. Fernando Lorca Castro, who became ambassador of Costa Rica to the United States in September of 2018. Uh, Ambassador Lurk has many years of experience in international development and has prominent positions in transnational organizations as health policy advisor, a medical and a research manager, a primary care medical practitioner, and he still has full license to practice medicine in Costa Rica, Spain, and the United Kingdom. In 2014, Ambassador Lurka was appointed by uh, the current president, Luis Guillermo Solis Rivera, as the deputy minister of health, and subsequently became the minister and steward of health, nutrition, and sports sector in Costa Rica, where he established private and public safety regulations and best practice policies. Uh, he's also served as a role of the executive president of the Costa Rican Social Security Fund, which is the most important health care provider in the country, which formulates and executes health programs that are both preventative, such as vaccination, health information dissemination, fumigation, as well as healing surgery, radiation, pharmaceuticals, clinical developments. In addition to his medical degree, uh, Ambassador Lorca holds advanced studies uh, in political economics from Universidad Complutense in Madrid, a Master of Science in Health Policy, Planning, and Finance from the London School of Economics and Political Science and the School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. He also holds two master degrees in healthcare management as well as health economics and pharmacoeconomics from uh, Universidad Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. Sorry, I'm mispronouncing some things here, but uh, Ambassador Lorca, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. Thank you, Ira. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to be in your program and, of course, to talk about um, uh, Costa Rica and also all the technology improvements um, that we are trying to introduce to the way the government works, also with, this, with the private sector, but, but mainly in the public sector, definitely. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's great to be here. Absolutely. It's an honor having you. Um, you know, for, we typically start off the show, we give our guests the floor just to, to learn a lot more about you, um, your background, how you developed an interest in 
medicine first and foremost, and then ultimately how you got interested in international development and ultimately you know, politics and have arrived in 2019 at this really influential position uh, in the Costa Rican government. Well, thank you. Yes, this is definitely um, a long trip for me and my family and, and a long journey in the way that um, when I was young, I wanted to become uh, a medical practitioner, a physician, like a lot of a lot of kids, not only in Costa Rica, also here in the United States. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I was really interested in, in politics. Um, I actually considered to study um, uh, political sciences as a, as a career mm -hmm. to, to develop um, and, and, and even diplomacy. But finally, because my father was a medical practitioner back then, and, and of course, in a country like Costa Rica with a strong uh, healthcare sector, it was, it was definitely, uh, I, I, made, I made up my mind and I decided to, to become a, a doctor. I used to practice medicine in Costa Rica, mainly it's uh, primary care. Mm -hmm. And, but but um, working in the rural zone in Costa Rica, the border between Nicaragua and Costa Rica, uh, the north part of the country, I finally decided to uh, study uh, public health affairs. Mm -hmm. And I first uh, uh, decided to become a medical manager. So I studied for that. And I and I become, well, part of the medical, the, 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 the management department of a small clinic in Costa Rica. But, um, well, I always tell the story like this. Then I, I got married with uh, Evelyn Cermeño, my, my uh, wife. And we decided to, well, to travel all around the world. We mm -hmm. had the option to move to Spain uh, to study, but also to work because I have some family background mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, from my father's side. And, and well, I was able to practice medicine in Spain. Mm -hmm. which it was very good and a great experience for me. And, and we also study, like you already mentioned, some uh, health economics and pharmacoeconomics related master programs. But uh, being in Spain, uh, as I mentioned, I practice medicine, again, mainly in primary care, but then I, I, I become a medical manager for insurance companies. In, in, in Spain, mainly uh, private. So mm -hmm. I used to work for huge transnational companies, uh, insurance, health insurance companies, and, and that was a great experience for me. Then we decided to move to um, a, a London, because originally we, 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 we wanted to study, I'm talking about my wife and I, because believe me, she also studied in Spain and, and worked in, in her field, but we moved to London and she, she studied in, in the London School of Economics, social policy, and, and I started working in London, practicing medicine again as a disability analyst, working for the department work and pension, uh, the British one. And, and it was again, a great experience for, for us. And, and, and then it was again, my turn to study. I told her, now is your turn to work. And now is, is my turn to study. So I study health um, policy uh, planning and financing, which is, which is the most, the hardest part in the public sector, how to finance all this health care that all the population need, not only in the United States, I, I'm going to say, or in Costa Rica or in, in the UK or, or even Spain, in the whole world, how are we going to finance 
all the health care that our population needs. It doesn't matter if it is private way or public, how really are we? So I become, I will say, a specialist in, a specialist in that field. And well, after 12 years living in, in Europe, um, we, we decided to take an opportunity uh, in, in the public service field and become Deputy Minister of Health in Costa Rica, the former government of uh, Luis Guillermo Solis, the former president of Costa Rica. And suddenly I become the Minister of Health. And then, well, I, uh, after almost three years, I become the head of the health the main healthcare provider in Costa Rica, which is the social security system. So this has been a long, a long journey, a long way to get here. When I was working as a minister of health, I was able to meet the, the, the president of Costa Rica, Carlos Alvarado. He was first uh, minister of, of uh, what we call development affairs, and he become the minister of labor affairs after mm -hmm. that. So we, we used to work very close together. And when he became the president, he, he, he wanted me to continue the work of the former ambassador uh, Costa Rica here in the, in the United States. Mm -hmm. And he was a scientist. Um, uh, oh, he is a scientist and he was working on that field here in Washington trying to promote Costa Rica as a great country to, to invest in, 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 in several scientific fields, mm -hmm. but in healthcare definitely. And, and we also um, um, he, we swap positions. I mean, he become the head of the healthcare uh, institution, this uh, huge uh, healthcare public provider in Costa Rica. And, and we continue, uh, I would say, working, working together, but, but because we swap positions, I assume his projects here of trying to promote Costa Rica as as a great place also to 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 not only for former investors who want to to develop their uh, companies in Costa Rica mm -hmm. also for people foreign people who want to take advantage of the uh, high quality services that Costa Rica is able to provide, for example, in healthcare mm -hmm. and also well-being. And at the same time, well, Costa Rica is already known as a as a ecotourism place to to visit. So so that's how I get uh, I, I already got here and 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 well, I already mentioned what I consider my main goals here and in, in, as an ambassador of a, of a very nice and beautiful country like Costa Rica. It's a, it's a fascinating background to it and, and the fact that you got to travel so much and see, you know, not just obviously all the schooling and, you know, you know medical school and, and politics and business, but that you got to see these different systems uh, and different countries. It, it's, a, it's a really fascinating set of skills that uh, obviously suit you, you very well for, for your current position. As you said in the introduction, you know, Costa Rica has this, you know, place, um, you know, I've seen referred to as this amazing success story in not just Central America, but I guess the whole, um, uh, hemisphere as being, you know, you have these amazing um, health and wellness statistics, you have this amazing longevity uh, statistics, and then on top of that, this happiness index that, you know, rates it just as a great pace where people love to live and work. And what, what has Costa Rica done so right on, on that front that sort of 
brings those three things together? Um, you know, what has gotten you there? Because obviously there's a lot of things that we in the United States could be learning probably from all of that. Um, what, what are some of the takeaways there in terms of you know, what brought Costa Rica out of you know, the dozens of countries uh, in the region to such success on that front? A great question, of course, but it's all, always a hard question to, to answer, but I will try to do so. Costa Rica developed as a small country, you already know, mm -hmm. uh, located in Central America. Uh, we didn't get, uh, it's going to become 200 years old very soon in 2021. Um, so mm -hmm. we recently celebrate our 198 years of independence life. But, but what uh, it was amazing is that Costa Rica didn't got huge natural resources to, to, to explode. I mean, we got some, of course, but mm -hmm but we didn't got oil or any other gold or silver like some other like Latin American countries. We didn't got huge populations of, of um, natives. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we had to develop, I always try to say on our own way. And so agriculture become the, 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 the most important uh, field that we 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 try to work on, and the first very important product export product was the coffee. The coffee bean, as a roasted coffee, or well, mainly to Europe, then to the United States, and Costa Rica become a monoproduct uh, country of of export, but. Um, Back then, we had a lot of visionary, we, we can say now, presidents, politicians, and that made huge or very important decisions to, to, to the way Costa Rica developed a long time ago. I mean, we avoid the army, for example, um, 70 years ago, more than 70 years ago. That's a long time without army. Of course, we were able to put that money in something else. Mm -hmm. Like what? Education, healthcare, and you can imagine. Sure. Costa Rica, for example, declared the education, primary basic education for all the population. Um, since the 80, um, yes, more than 150 years ago, mm. I'm talking about, uh, it was mandatory for both boys and girls, which was another important area that Costa Rica developed, always try to become an Bolivarian country. I mean, we don't we don't have those huge difference between gender or between race or between religion. And I mean, we develop that kind of way of thinking that everybody has to the same or should have the same opportunities. And 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 at the same time, we also uh, develop, for example, in the healthcare area strong institutions, a Minister of Health, uh, a minister, yes, Ministry of Health, who has reached more than 90 years recently. Hmm. A nutrition program for kids that already become 68 years old. Uh, so, so we solved that nutrition problems a long time ago. Okay. And, and, and another thing, the, the institution that, that I used to run, the one who provides the healthcare, to, we have universal coverage since the 80s, early 80s, talking about a long time, universal coverage. And, and well, the institution that was, that, that, that is able to provide that, it was a very interesting project between three leaders and a very weird, let's call it 
joint uh, adventure project. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 the, regil, the the most important religious uh, leader, okay. the most important communist leader, mm. and the president who was put there by the richest people in the country. <laughs> so that's, I'm going to call it the weirdest um, um, agreement or, or, or the weirdest team to develop this, what we call uh, Las Garantias Sociales, which is a huge pro pro uh, project to develop uh, some well-being in Costa Rica. They developed the University of Costa mm -hmm. Rica, so that's higher education for accessible for people, and also the healthcare services. But at the same time, some pension, some structure of money to be to to be able to retire for most of the popular population. Um, uh, that kind of initiatives that we can call a, a small or Central American way of uh, welfare state, we can call it. So, in my point of view, all of these things put together um, um, were very important to, to, to develop a country that suddenly, af after being already figured it out those those things so we start to um, producing more agriculture products to to be export not only coffee we try to export fruits and so well bananas become mm -hmm. a, a very important product in costa rica pineapples and and some other fruits like mangoes or some other and and that was very important because a small um let's call it the small companies of production were able to also to export and that helps a lot of people that wasn't able maybe to to have huge fields with coffee mm -hmm. and, but but anyway a small uh um people who 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 wanted to produce Coffee, they, they were also ab able to do it. But, but anyway, suddenly the, um, the economy started to produce uh, some other products like um, clothes mm -hmm. and, and some other handmade products. I always tell the story, we had the factory for, for a while, long time, of the baseballs. That were used here in the in the in the well in the championship here in the United States. Right, right. So and and they were made in Costa Rica, handmade, carefully made because it's very. I mean, it's it's you need to be very focused and it's a very delicate product. If we don't if you don't produce it properly, well, the ball is you already know. I don't know if you play baseball but Absolutely. it's not going to be a good a good ball anyway <laughs> so but but Costa Rica become a country not so cheap to produce that I mean it become a little bit expensive for that um, because our population we invest a lot in, in, in human talent trying to I already mentioned the, the, the education is accessible for most of the population. And that was very important because, uh, and, and because we invest in some specific fields like healthcare, um, we, we were able to jump to, to produce some other um, handmade high technology products like the medical devices, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now Costa Rica, uh, it's one of the most important uh, export countries in medical devices in, in the whole in the whole region, and and, and for sure it, it has a very good position in, in in terms of the whole world. But 
but um, um, we were also working already in, in some other high tech products like software, mm -hmm. um, is, is special. There, there was a huge plan of, um, that produced chip, uh, chips for, for computers and also uh, some other technology, hardware devices. And, but so, so we were producing hardware devices, but at the same time, very specialized, but at the same time, uh, software. Mm. And, and in some other fields like services, we were able to, because Costa Rica has been investing in becoming a bilingual country, bilingual society, a lot since a long time ago. Uh, we had some population that speaks not only English, some of them are able to speak French and mm -hmm. even some other language like Italian, Germany. And, well, now we are starting with the Chinese, but what I'm trying to say is that call centers, services um, were developed in Costa Rica and at the same time, um, services like financial contability services for huge companies and more recently for example uh, we we are providing um, international some international or transnational companies pharmaceutical are now starting to provide service from Costa Rican platform to the rest of the world um, in pharmacovigilance and technovigilance, which mm -hmm. is, you know, when you develop a drug and it's already in the market, in most of the developed countries, uh, the producer and the, the company who, who commercialize that kind of products has the responsibility of that follow-up I mean, trying to record all the the adverse reactions, you know, allergies, um, that kind of side effects that sometimes people doesn't realize during the the research or sure. the develop process of the product, but maybe you find out uh, after after the, the 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 drug is already being used by the population in the free market so so why is that because costa rica is able to provide human talent in these fields i mean engineers uh, um, pharmaceuticals uh, pharmacologists mm -hmm. uh, uh, medical practitioners and uh, uh, managers and well as finance specialists enough to keep the business going on in the country without stopping because you know it's not a matter of just opening the the, the service or the platform or the factory right if you need people to keep the business going on and and, and 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 one of the most important things those companies doesn't want is to find out suddenly find out that they have to import the, the human talent from elsewhere with all the problems. I mean, they want to find great talent in, in, in the country where they are, of course, making those investments. And, and Costa Rica has been able to provide that. And, and well, they usually, when you ask them, why are you in Costa Rica? They usually said, because we are really happy um, with this human talent. Um, uh, that you can find in Costa Rica. So, but I'm not going to 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 will to deny uh, huge challenges that we have to face and some other things that we haven't really solved and new new things that we have to face because of the whole world and the whole way of the the production 
system that we develop is changing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't mind, in the, uh, I would like to mention something about what we are doing to face sure. the fourth industrial revolution. I'd like to focus now on, if you would, just for a little bit, um, are these two what I'll call these, I don't know if they call them emerging pillars, but what really Costa Rica is becoming extremely well known for in terms of both uh, ecotourism uh, and simultaneously um, the topic of medical tourism, because you, know, you mentioned medical tourism, at least in this hemisphere, you think Costa Rica, and it's um, I forget what the numbers on medical tourism now around the world are, but I think it's upwards of a hundred billion dollar business now and growing. Obviously, we have huge healthcare numbers all over the world. People are dissatisfied with services, with cost, and Costa Rica is an example of a wonderful country that has made amazing strides in really creating uh, this as a, a a real business pillar of the economy. Can you, can you talk a little bit about both ecotourism and medical tourism, uh, how you know that's growing. Are there uh, surprises, obviously, that come along? Um, um, obviously, that brings a tremendous influx of, of tourists um, and, and travelers into the country. Um, but I, clearly, this is a major a part, I would guess, of that fourth wave. Um, can you speak to a little bit of this? Because it really is a fascinating component of the of the Costa Rican story, I feel. Well, yes, of course. Um, it's, it's good to mention how do we get here mm -hmm. in, those, in those specific um, areas. First, we were able to, to, to protect our resources, natural resources. We, we wanted to keep the forest. We, we stopped the forestation a long time ago and we reversed that actually the Costa Rica uh, started uh, what we call an, a real national or state policy in environmental affairs. And we started to protect, and, and finally, I'm going to say that we, we are now proud to say that more of the 50% of our forest, I mean, of our uh the size of our country is protected uh in in some with with some different figures some some are private some are public some are private public initiatives and 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 it's amazing because costa rica started to realize that the biodiversity that we have it was something really special because of the geographic location that we have mm -hmm. uh, for example butterflies we we have so many species some people is saying that we we can find in Costa Rica uh, in a very small country uh, more butterflies species than in the whole African continent for example Right. That is the kind of um, biodiversity that you can find in a country like Costa Rica. For example, another impressive uh, data is that, well, we, we, we used to have a, a, an institution that registered new species. And they were registering several species per day. Hmm. So, which is, I mean, of, of everything, insects, uh, um, fungical, which is different kind of mushrooms, mm -hmm. mushroom, mm -hmm. and, and, and some other species, species, plants and, and flowers. I mean, because the, the biodiversity of Costa Rica is very special. And, and because we were able to, to keep it that way, we developed the ecotourism. And, and actually we were trying to sell or to change that was an, an innovation very innovative program of interchange oxy, oxygen we demonstrate how many oxygen we produce mm -hmm. and we, we some countries sign an agreement with Costa Rica to change that for um, uh, the international debt of Costa Rica 
we we had with them, and that was a a, a very innovative uh, initiative in that field. In the medical tourism, I will say that the base is that we have a huge healthcare public system. Mm -hmm. You had the infrastructure to train those people to provide to that healthcare system. And then we, we also develop a very strong private uh, healthcare system made of some several providers that started to export services. I mean, to bring people, foreigners to be treated in Costa Rica. They started with dental uh, treatments mm -hmm. or aesthetic, you know, plastic sure. surgery. But we, we now can offer a huge list of, of services uh, in the healthcare field. And not only health, it's also well-being. We are developing a huge well-being options of products to be export. Um, it goes from truly natural um, bed and breakfast that helps people to recover mm -hmm. in a very natural way in terms of providing peace and relaxed uh, environmental them to recover. Also, we, we, well, we are located in a, in a very, Costa Rica is a very mount, mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mount, yeah, we have a lot of mountains and also volcanoes. Sure. So we, we, we are providing uh, thermal treatments in terms of, of, of yeah thermal water treatments and also these uh, volcano soil. Um, that's, I mean, we have an offer of natural products, very important. Sure. But at the same time, people who want to practice specific uh, sport could be also some risk sports like kayaking or, or uh, rafting or, um, a sky trek or a sky walk or uh, well i will say just to walk around a, an active volcano it's a sure. risky activity <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> and you can you can and, and 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 you can find in costa rica some active volcanoes and that it's something that a lot of people want to see at least once in their lives so to say. costa rica has been developing this uh, health and well-being offer of some some special products to the foreigners, and a lot of people is, is is visiting Costa Rica because of that. And finally, Costa Rica, we already found that Costa Rica is already um, a country that has been targeted as a, a place to retire for a lot of people. Not only from the United States, we, we we have a lot of people, a lot of U.S. citizens living in Costa Rica. I'm gonna tell you a personal story about that. Sure. In Quepos, very close to Manuel Antonio, which is one of the most popular uh, beaches uh, in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. uh, in the Pacific side, I was able to meet a couple of U.S. citizens, uh -huh. and they were retired there. One was the, an ex Air Force One pilot. He used to fly for, for, President. for President Nixon. Oh, wow. <laughs> and and he, he was really happy there. And another one was a uh, um, uh, Vietnam vet uh, with some physical problems and limitations. But he, he told me, it's amazing, um, my my income i mean it's 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 i take more advantage of of being in costa rica because the people who help me are so much more cheaper than in in, in the united states mm. the helpers yeah and and so they were really happy in living in, in in the middle of the forest they 
they woke up uh, every day and some days you, you, you just, I mean, you just open the window, there's a lot of uh, Congo monkeys, which makes a huge sound. They scream a lot and make a very specific, very interesting sounds and, uh, during the morning. And, 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 well, we also have people from, from retired people from Canada and also from Europe, it's mm -hmm. very popular. And now I can tell you, well, in general, in tourism, we are at 5 million people mm -hmm. in Africa, and we are receiving now three and a half million tourists wow. per year. More than two million are coming from the United States, mm. and the rest, well, from the rest of the world, but mainly from uh, Canada and, 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 and Europe, mainly Europe. Um, um, yes, uh, those, those fields uh, are now an option in Costa Rica, a real option. To be honest, Costa Rica is not that far no. from the United States. Um, in terms of the distance and well we have a lot of a very similar system in the way we regulate the professions I mean medical practitioners are very well trained and the specialists are very well recognized a lot of them came here to the United States to complete their training in some mm -hmm. specific field so and and we have we develop a lot of agreements with universities with um, research institutions imagine in costa rica uh the papilloma vaccine right. which is a problem uh that has has been linked with cervical cancer sure in, in women um was developed in costa rica mm. but, but the NIH and the, the Institute of Cancer in the United States, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and it was a joint venture developing this, this um, product that is already being used in the whole world. So, so, I mean, it's not only, what I'm trying to say is that it's not only aesthetic or dental services. Sure, sure. It's also something else in terms of research, developing new products, and also um, in terms of the design and, 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 and the follow-up, as I mentioned, of, of the way of those products are actually being used in, 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 in what should be the most important thing for all of us, people it comes full circle now as you as you say with the not you know not just the aesthetics but the research the pharmacovigilance uh, and we are this is 2019 this is a, a very connected world not just for uh, travel but for medical training for medical education for research and um, it's I didn't know that about the vaccine I, my, I know my daughter my daughter got it recently but I, I had no idea the connection to Costa Rica so that's that's fascinating and it's it's, it's wonderful to see those um, those interconnections. Obviously, you don't. Uh, maybe you do, but you don't have a crystal ball on on your desk there. But um, it's 2019. You know, take us out the next 10, 20 years. What's next for Costa Rica? Because it's just yeah. the, there's so much potential. Uh, anything you want to talk about on that front that you're really yes, excited yes, about? Absolutely. Well, I would like to begin recognizing that that we have huge challenges. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, because we develop these huge institutions in the public sector, we now have a huge size of the the government institution mm -hmm. and all the. So we we've been dealing with some fiscal problems, and, and this government is has the political will to to solve that and has been doing that. So we approve a tax reform recently. You can imagine, nobody wants more taxes or the 
the taxes to be changed in the way that they will have to pay a little bit more. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, that's so those are not popular changes, but we are lucky to have a president who are facing those problems and uh, trying to do something and actually introducing very, very important um, changes in a, in a very positive way, on the right direction. And at the same time, we have to face another problem, which is the unemployment. Employment become a huge problem in Costa Rica. We all were already reaching 12% of the population, which is a huge unemployment. Um, and we recognize that the, 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 the problem of this um, data is that that has the face of, of women and young people, mm. which is something that we, 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 we are trying to, to take care in a very special way. Sure. So because of that, we, we, we found out that it's a structural problem. A lot of people had access to this very specialized training and to be hired by these international companies. So they are very well paid. And, but we have a huge population still. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people is, is also coming from the rest of, of Central America because Costa Rica is a, it's a country that is, is constantly receiving migration from uh. Latin America, but mainly from Central America and a very special way from Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And so these people that used to work for agriculture um, production lines and, 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 and they don't they don't have that option anymore mm -hmm. as, as that easily as or used to be in the past. But uh, that's why we are putting a lot of for trying to teach them English, for example. So they can be part of the touristic tourism force of, of, of and, attain, and be able to attend foreigners in English. And that is something that the president has been working and the whole government in a very special way. But at the same time, we also found out that they, they are not going to study in the university. I mean, they are not going to become engineers, all of them. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are now trying to put a lot of attention in what we call the, it's, a, it's like a technique training. And, and, and we recently tried to copy the model that has been working in, in Europe, mainly in Germany, Austria, and countries like Hungary in terms of, of that these people can be trained or educated in, 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 in the companies sure. where they are going to work. I mean, it's like a technical training supervised, but they are teachers, but also in the real life from the, their future bosses in the companies. And we want to reduce the gap of being graduated from high school and finally finding uh, for your first job. Right. And we've been working so hard on, on that. We recently approved a, a huge act or new law mm -hmm. that is called uh, dual vocational training and is promoting this program. And also we recently approved a teleworking uh, uh, regulation. Okay. Because we already know that the future works for people are not going to be in, 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 in huge building of offices. I mean, you can work from home. Sure. Actually, actually, you're a great example of that <laughs> in some way. So what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that Costa Rica is trying to face what we realize is already here is the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. One of the main changes that I introduced to the healthcare system is to finally implement 
the, the digital file record. Not only at the hospital level, right. also at the primary care. Okay. I mean, the three levels of the, 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 this universal cover are, are connected in, in, a, in a unique digital file record. So you can uh, consult a, a physician in one side of the country and you can, that doctor can have access to the whole record of that person. It doesn't matter if it was uh, registered in the other side of the country. Um, that helps in, in management a lot. That helps in research. Absolutely. And that also helps to people because uh, um, a lot of time is when, when you receive a new patient is asking, well, all the, the medical history to the sure. patient, but just with a click, you can have it in front of you uh, uh, in a couple of seconds. And at the same time, we, we are trying to introduce what we call the digital government. I mean, what I'm telling you in healthcare is something that we, we should develop in everything. I mean, the way the state, the, 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 the government buy um, all the, the equipment, the infrastructure, the, the way people is hired. And, and, and at, at the end, uh, we would like to be the first, at least the first Latin American country of, of, of becoming uh, uh, completely digital in, 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 in terms of, and, and, and at the same time, um, we are also, we have a huge, very, very, I know it's it's gonna take a long time, but because Costa Rica has these environmental policies mm -hmm. already implemented as a real thing in Costa Rica, right? And we we for example we develop our way to produce electricity is is mainly based on hydroelectric sources, mm -hmm. wind sources, Absolutely. and geothermic also because we're taking energy from the volcanoes right mm -hmm. yeah. and that is all of this is a lot of technology sure <laughs> and 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 so we we have almost 10 percent a hundred percent of our electricity is coming from renewable sources which is something very important absolutely i have reached some European countries, for example, the most green ones have 40, 60 percent of the, the year. We have 100. Mm. And because of that, we are now facing another huge problem that we have. Mm. Transport, the transport. We, we didn't develop uh, a public transport system properly. Okay. So definitely um, the president wants to become, wants Costa Rica to become a decarbonized de de country. And we know that the transport, the public transport uh, is our first huge uh, uh, challenge. Sure. We have to face, so we are trying to um introduce and promote electric cars electric trains electric buses and, and well uh those are the changes that we are trying to to introduce for the future i mean a fourth industrial revolution can't exist properly if you don't take into account the environmental sure if you don't take into account Distribu distribution of wealth. 
terms of the population. Everybody Absolutely. has to have access to work, to first to study, to health, to nutrition, to, uh, and well, Costa Rica wants to keep the values that we develop, democracy, institutions, human rights, respect on diversity, Mm -hmm. It's very important for Costa Rica. Um, the environment, continue being a peaceful country. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in international conflict. Forget about the military. <laughs> um, and we, we want to keep those values, Absolutely. principles, and to renew to change the, the way we are going to keep them going on as the most important um, representation of what Costa Rica and Costa Ricans are in, 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 in this concert of countries of the world. <laughs> very, very elegantly said, and um, it's a, a a fascinating future vision. Obviously, as you said along the way, there's challenges, but um, it, it just still must be a a fascinating time building. As we say on the show, usually you know you're, you're creating the future, and it's uh, just an amazing set of things that you have going on in, in each of these areas. Uh, really eye-opening. Dr. Ambassador, I, I, your, your time is very valuable. I understand that. I don't want to take too much more of it. I just have one final question that we give as sort of the wrap-up on the show. Uh, and this is um, really more, it gets a little more personal, but back to you. And um, throughout your career to date uh, in, in, in medicine and in business and politics, um, it's a question about influencers. Uh, is there anyone specifically that on your path from, you know, childhood to now really kept you on this road and if it wasn't for them um, you would have gone on and done something totally different um, whether it be law or who knows, agriculture or whatever uh, is there someone special in your life that you might want to mention on, on that particular front that kept you well uh, thank you thank you very much uh, yes in a personal way uh, my father was a, a physician who, who used to practice mm -hmm. primary care and who dedicate his life to the one of the institutions that I, I was honored to, to run, La Caja. Uh, and, and my mother, my mother mm. was uh, someone who, who always and support me in everything, in the training that I have, in all my trips, in and 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 I believe that her my value, my my values and, and education, it's it's because of her. And well, in a political perspective in Costa Rica, there is I told you the three dream team yeah. of the one of them was a physician who was the president and he was trained in Europe for the Dr. Calderon Guardia. I can say he's definitely a, a Costa Rican politician that inspired us all, definitely. And in a, in a very international perspective, you know, this, this new, um, economists like Amartya Sen um, and some other development economists, uh, their point of view uh, has made a strong influence in, 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 in my life. Dr. Ambassador, it's, it's been truly an honor having you today uh, and, and, and listening to your story and everything that you're doing and, as I said, moving the future forward. Um, really thanking you 
once again for taking the time and once again for everybody uh, listening and watching the show. Uh, we have been with Ambassador Dr. Fernando Larca Castro, uh, Ambassador of Costa Rica to the United States of America, really doing amazing things in terms of uh, healing people, healing the environment, um, creating the future uh, really in a a laboratory ecosystem, a uh, country all in one. It, it's been truly a fascinating time. And, and thank you really for spending it with us and, and enlightening us to everything that you're doing. Really fascinating journey. Thank you very much, Ira. It has been a pleasure. And, and well, thank you to all the audience and the people that has been with us. And um, has been really an honor and a pleasure to talk uh, with you today. And of course, to talk about Costa Rica, the country that I love and that I'm representing here.